My name is Kaz XL, uh, formerly known as Big Cass when I was with WWE. I always dreamed of being a wrestler, I always dreamed of being in WWE. That was what I always wanted to do. I was always unsure of myself, uh, never 100% confident, but you do start to gain confidence the more success you're having, the more people say you're doing well. Sold at the Barclays Center in 2015. Crazy, crazy ovation when we came out. And I think from there on, there that's when I think they WWE might have decided we're going to have to bring these guys up at some point in the next year. Two nights before WrestleMania, after the Takeover show in Dallas, Hunter came up to me and Enzo and said, "Hey, you guys, can you stick around?" We we're like, uh, "Okay." Told us that we were going to debut on Raw that Monday, and like, awesome. We went out there. Everybody knew every word. Came to the back. Got a standing ovation from everybody in gorilla position. Off to the races from there. Being depressed is one thing. Having depression on a daily basis is, is different. So anybody that looks at them like they're weak or, you know, a, a crybaby or whatever, that's an, that, that person's ignorant. Why is this guy upset? He has money, he has, you know, everything he dreamed of since he was a little kid doing wrestling matches in his bedroom. But man, that don't mean f all when you're not well here, man don't mean anything. And it's hard to tell people about it because who knows what they're gonna say, you know? Uh, you're looking for attention. Uh, you have everything you ever wanted, you know? Like, you're just being, you're just seeking more attention or whatever it is. So you don't tell it, you keep it to yourself. Uh, dealing with that on a daily basis, TVs were the worst for me because of anxiety. I'd always had it and then it kind of ramped up after the debut and you don't really tell anybody and you kind of hide it deep down which is the worst thing you can do i had no medication i had no means of talk there i had no one to talk to about it didn't seek help for for years self-medicated with with alcohol i was in my hotel room and it was just everything was going crazy uh just de depressed anxiety couldn't fall asleep went to the bars trying to drink beers and just couldn't really fall asleep. When I woke up, I was like, I wish that God would have just taken me in my sleep. Why am I thinking this? I have no idea. And I was just so down. And I was like, I wish that I wouldn't be alive today. I was like, I wish that I would have just not woken up. But then I got to go to work. So I went to work and I had a match against Enzo and uh, tore my ACL. I got emotional. I was f just a wreck, man. I was a complete and utter wreck. Look, I didn't know who to look to. God, is God up there? What, like, wh why would you do this of all, like, after what I've been going through? I don't know how I'm alive today. Just the amount that I was drinking was ridiculous. Uh, the food I was putting in my body was ridiculous. No physical activity. Chain smoking cigarettes, and uh, like I said, the, the amount of alcohol I was putting into my body on certain days. I don't know how I'm, I don't know how I'm alive right now. When you're making mistakes like that, you gotta go. <laughs> Boy, they had every right in the world to get rid of me. And then I went to do that House of Hardcore show in Philadelphia. At that point in time, going into the show, I hadn't slept in two days. Two full days, and now people say I haven't slept in two days, and they've slept like an hour here and there. No, I literally mean I, I didn't sleep a second in two days. Don't remember walking out through the curtain, don't remember going to the autograph table, came to in the ambulance and they told me you had a seizure. I was like, what the f a seizure? I'm not epileptic. I've never had any issues with that. And I took that as a sign from God. God spoke to me that day. He was saying, you want to live this life or well, you're going to end up dead. Okay. So here's, taste this because this is where your life is heading. I could have died that night. That's what I was told in the ER. And I enacted change, man. This guy walks up to me while I'm signing autographs. I don't know this guy from Adam, by the way. Comes up to me, says, you're deeply depressed. He said, I don't know what's going on with you, but you're depressed, you're deeply, you're down. And I'm gonna help you out. After the seizure, I immediately went to go live with him in Delaware. Sober living, clean living, uh, healthy, positive attitude. And he turned my life around. This is, this is number one every day, keeping my mind right. I don't value money. Like, it's not like, oh, I gotta make X amount of dollars by the time I'm 35 or whatever. I don't value that. I just want to be happy. I want to stay happy. Everything else is going to fall into place if I could do all that. 
I know God is with me. I know he's watching over me. Yeah, it's made me value my relationships with those people that are close to me a lot more. Yeah, I am sitting here right now and telling you that I should be dead with the amount that I drank and the seizure that I had and I shouldn't be here. If anybody out there suffers with depression, anxiety, and you're hiding it because there's a stigma out there that you're weak, you're not weak. Whatever it is, you need to go seek help because whether it's medication or, or talk therapy or whatever it is that you need, you need to get it because hiding it deep down, it ain't gonna work. And that's what I did for a long time and eventually pop, every, it, it's just an explosion. Whatever you need to, to do to fix it, make sure you do that because keeping that shit bottled deep down, it ain't worth it, man. Trust me, from someone that lived it, seek help.